So we're just going to go ahead and get started uh, creating our first website in HTML. And um, just to keep it simple, at first we're going to create a simple text file using a, a plain old text editor like Notepad. So on my Windows machine, I'm going to open up the Start menu. I'm going to type in Notepad. And uh, I'm going to start creating my first website. So the simplest website that I can think of is, is honestly just a word. I can just say hello, and that is a website, believe it or not. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file. Um, you can go to the File menu and click Save, or you can just, as the shortcut says here, Control S. So you probably want to get used to the shortcut keys, Control S to save it. So now it's asking me what do I want to name the file and where do I want to put it. So up here in the location, uh, it's the desktop. That's where I want to put it, so that's fine. And down here, I don't want it to be a text file. I just want it to be whatever I whatever I name it. So I'm going to say all files, and I'm going to call it index.html. Uh, this is just a pretty standard naming convention. Most most of the time, when you start off with a, a first page or a first aspect of your website, it's usually called index.html. You can name it anything you want, but uh, that's what we're going to call it to start off with. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And on my desktop here, uh, my new file appears. So that's it. I'm done actually creating my first website. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And here's my file. So if I double click this, you can see the operating system already has detected that it's a Chrome HTML document because uh, my particular computer has the default web browser set up as Google Chrome. So even though this is just a text file that says hello inside of it, um, it's called a .html file, therefore it's going to treat it like a website. And Google Chrome is going to do its best to open it and read the HTML inside of it and show us whatever document is being described there. So I'm going to go ahead and double click. Let's zoom this in a little bit, holding control and mouse wheel up a little bit. So you can see the browser indeed is showing me a website, a very simple website, um, that says hello. And the reason being is because if we view the page source, which is behind the scenes here, this is the metadata. This is the HTML. So the browser looks at that and it says, well, what am I supposed to do with this? It's just the word hello. So I guess I'll just put it on the screen because there's no other information there other than a word. Therefore, this is the, the look and feel that we get from that particular HTML, which is very simple. Uh, there's no markup. We haven't marked up this text at all. It's just plain old text. And anything that you don't mark up gets treated very literally and uh, just at face value. So just to get started with a, an example of what it means to mark something up at all, I'm going to open this file again for editing. So I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to say edit. And hopefully, oh, I knew it. It's opening it in Microsoft Word. You got to be careful about that. So if that happens to you, just close it, right click again, and this time I'm going to be smart and say open with, because um, apparently my computer is configured so that it will edit HTML files with Microsoft Word. So I'm going to go ahead and open this with Notepad this time. Open with Notepad, not Microsoft Word, please. So now I'm actually going to add some markup. An example of this is the the most basic piece of markup, which is a tag called HTML. So I'm just going to add a little bit of formatting here by indenting it and putting some space just for the fun of it. Oops, forgot one important thing, slash. So in HTML, metadata consists of tags and attributes. And this is an example of a tag. So this is the HTML tag. Um, anything that's in between brackets like that is considered the beginning of a tag. So this reads as begin the HTML. And anything that has a slash in front of it reads as the end of the tag. So this reads the end of HTML. Now, most markup languages are very conceptual. So literally, you want to read this um, kind of to yourself in English as everything between here and the end tag is HTML. Now you might that might not be completely clear or well, what does it mean to be HTML but with markup language sometimes it doesn't matter it really is just 
saying something about the information and letting the person that is reading the information make what they will of it. We're really just making a statement here. We're saying, hey, there are some browsers out there and they're going to be reading this and I just want to make a statement to the browsers saying, hey, everything in between this tag and the ending of that tag is HTML. And you know, treat it accordingly as the language dictates. So this is really the nature of um, metadata, and that some of it is very, you know, it could be ambiguous, but hopefully, you know, most of it is defined by the, um, the specifications of the HTML markup language. So, um, you know, in general, this this concept of the tag is important to grasp at the beginning, just so you can first of all know what a tag is, what it looks like, the syntax of it being you know, a word in brackets and then an end of the same word. Um, and then just saying to yourself, okay, everything in between the begin and the end is whatever that tag says it is. So we'll notice that if we close this and reopen our document, it still looks the same. Even if I right click here and I say inspect element, or sorry, view page source, we can still see the complete metadata is, hey, everything from here on forth is HTML. It shows the word hello, and then it says, oh, okay, now we're done showing we're we're done showing the HTML. So it really still is just the word hello. This is kind of real information, and this is what we call just metadata or markup. So markup and metadata is not necessarily shown on the screen. It's used in whatever way the language dictates and the browser needs to be programmed in such a way that it understands how to interpret the metadata. So that's kind of the, the basic principle of uh, HTML and the browsers that have to interpret that HTML. And everything that we talk about going forward is kind of going to be an extension of this same concept.